This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Alright, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this PS4. It's a 1200 series machine with an SAC 001 revision motherboard in there and today this one's been sent in from Sam Sam's a viewer of the channel and he sent this one in because it has the 4 pin power supply connector ripped out of the motherboard and it also doesn't have a disk drive that reads any disks and it's also very noisy in play mode apparently so there's a myriad of problems with this machine so let's have a look and see if we can work them out now then there are some kids outside the uh, my uh, my workshop door today playing football so hopefully they won't make too much noise but uh, yes so anyway as you can see there underneath the microscope we have the headers here for where that four pin connector should sit and as you can see indeed they are ripped out so we've had this one isn't actually that bad so we can see here we have one pad two pad three pads and this pad here that's been ripped out we also have the connector that's been provided so that one was just stuck to the bottom of the power supply so that's all good so what have we got here then so we have these two lines here these are data lines uh, that's just a bit of crap from uh, manufacture so we're not too worried about the stuff that's flaking off um, but yes so essentially what you've got here these two pins here on the bottom the bottom left and bottom right are data lines so these communicate to and from the power supply with the motherboard so it can monitor what's going on and uh, essentially like a remote wire to get the power supply to initialize we have this here which is ground we can tell it's ground because it's just in this big wide open expanse of nothing so that's a ground pad and here we can see we have this smoothing cap and it also goes through these holes here these rather large vias for current draw and essentially we know therefore that this is the 5 volt area so this is the 5 volt pin unfortunately we don't have much of that left so we're going to have to do something about that uh, and like I say we have these two data pins and ground so luckily the two data pins and ground are still intact so we've got to sort out this, uh, this 5 volt area just here so what we're going to do is we're just going to offer the plug or the connector even up to where it should go and we're just going to see what we've got left to work with here if we've got anything at all we can sort of salvage on that broken pin so I'm not so sure you're going to see much of this because unfortunately this, the height of this connector is probably going to block your view for a lot of it I'm just trying to line everything up on the relevant pad so we can see what we've got so if I try and turn this around maybe you can see a little bit more can you? maybe not oh you can just about see the stub of the pin just there so that's where it should be but there's nothing in front of it so I think what we're probably going to need to do here is a two, oh, there's always more than one way of skinning a cat right so there's a couple of ways we can do this one is if I can get this back in view one is we can scrape a little bit more of this area here if we can scrape a little bit more of this area here and we can solder onto that all this area here within this dark green boundary is 5 volt so that's okay so we can scrape this little bit back here at the side of the pin say and we can bridge across we can do that that's absolutely fine there's no problem with that uh, likewise uh, like I said these three here these are just a case of soldering the pins back in so it's this one the other thing we can do is we can run a fairly thick wire from that pin to the front side of this capacitor here and that will also do the same job so I think what I'm going to try and do just out of, sort of like ease of ease of use I think what we're going to do is we're going to remove this cap to buy us a little bit more room we're going to scrape this area back and then we'll try and bridge across here if we can do that and then we'll pop this capacitor back even place so I think that's probably going to be the um, that's going to be the way to go, I think, looking at this. So, I'm just going to flatten out the pins 
on this connector because as you can see because it's been ripped out of the board the pins were actually sat up so the connector wasn't sitting flush with the board so I've just done that now so I've literally just put the connector on the flat of my table here and just pushed it down which has folded the legs back out and you can see there now we've got a lot more leg to work with so that should make replacing this a lot easier to do so we'll get rid of that so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this capacitor to buy us a little bit more space so we're going to get some fume extraction in here Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, as I say, is I'm going to remove this capacitor. I'm struggling a little bit for space here. I'm trying not to burn the connectors. Anything plugs into. Okay, so we have that, so we're just going to pop that to one side for now. So that will buy us a little bit more room to uh, to work with here. So we're just going to get the connector back out of the way. I was just going to dangle that one down by my leg, but that's probably a bad idea. That's going to burn. <laughs> I'm going to end up burning a hole through my leg, so uh, yes, we won't do that. Now if we can find where we are on the microscope, there we go. So we can see there now, look, we have nothing there. That's where the cap was, so the cap will go back there when we're finished. For now, while we're working on, on this, we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean the pins up. Because there's a little bit of circuit board stuck to the bottom side of this connector. Okay, so I've done that now. So it goes around this way, it goes around with the pins facing to the... So if you've got the 12 volt pin connector here, you go above it, this is the orientation, it can only really go on one way anyway. But those pins go to the rear, or to the left if you like. So that's where that goes, so again we're going to put that to one side now as well because we don't need that quite yet. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to clean this board slightly. With a little bit of IPA, just to get rid of the flux we use to help us remove that capacitor for now. And then we're going to see what we've got to work with. So we want to do as little modification to this board as possible, okay? We don't really want to be ripping it to pieces as such if we don't have to so I'm going to just get the edge of a Stanley blade here and I'm just going to scrape side of this board back Clean that up with a touch more alcohol. Go back and scrape it a bit more.
Right, okay, so we've scratched a nice little sort of square pad there next to where our 5 volt pin is going to sit on our connector. So what we need to do now is we're just going to apply a little bit of flux to each of those areas, including the one we've just scraped back. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to drag our connector back in. So we can see there that the connector lines up on most of those pads and it lines up just next door to where we've scratched our new pad. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to introduce a little bit of leaded solder. Now then if I'm careful here, we should get the positioning pretty much bang on. But this is me and being careful, so probably not going to happen. Do you know what? I think that might just about do it. So we'll just go and solder the back two. So I'm just going to turn this around so it's a little bit easier for me. So you can see there you've got the back two pins. Now then, we do have a tiny, tiny little capacitor there behind the right pin, so I'm going to change my tip here to a slightly smaller one. That will do, but and here's the thing because <laughs> this is where my sort of perfectionist side comes in. That would do, and I could leave it, but there we go. But that looks a lot better, doesn't it? So there we go. So those are the back two pins now soldered back in place. And of course we know our front one is soldered back in place. So all we need to do now is fix our, do our dodgy one. And as we can see there now, look, our 5 volt pin on our connector lines up smack next door to our little area here that we've essentially converted to our new pad. So what we're going to do is hopefully without getting this everywhere, Could do with a slightly smaller soldering iron tip if I'm honest. See, the thing is, I, I, I've obviously got this JBC station, and I've got a small conical tip, which is perfect for doing HDMI ports and things, and I've got the big fat tip, which is perfect for doing ground posts and things like that. Um, I could do with one in between. It's uh, got enough oomph to get into you know, fairly big joints, but isn't that big that it just gets in the way of everything else. Okay, and as you can see there now, we've just bridged across our pin there onto our new pad. So that's now created a new solder pad for our 5 volt pin. So that connector now is thoroughly fully resoldered back into position. So what we can do now is just to verify that that is indeed the case, we can get our multimeter back in here. And I'm just going to kill the fume extraction for a second. 
So what I want to know is, is whether that pin on the right there, the fourth pin in, what I want to know is, is that fourth pin there on the right now reading 5 volts? So if it is, then I should be able to put one multimeter probe on that far right pin there. And I should be able to put my other probe here on the back side of where our capacitor was. And we should get a beep to inform me we have continuity there now. We have one ohm and dropping. Very nice. What we shouldn't have is any continuity to that 5 volt pin anywhere else, particularly not the pin next door to it, because the pin next door to it there, the third pin in, is ground. So we can see there now that we don't have any continuity to ground, but that fourth pin is indeed connected. Lovely jubbly. Perfect. And that's it. So the connector is repaired. Our connector's back in place. Happy days, that was easy. So a nice easy one there. So if you remember, we do have another one on the channel. If you want to see just how bad they can be, um, there is a video on the channel, albeit it is an older board. It's an SAA, SAB revision. In fact, I think it's an SAB revision board because it's only a four pin connector. Um, but it is from one of the original sort of fat PlayStation 4s. And with that one, that was a real mess. The um, a big portion of that board had been ripped out, and in fact what had happened was it had been ripped out so badly that in fact um, the board, the 5 volt pin on the board had actually been ripped into the ground plane. So it had actually gone through several layers of the circuit board and had permanently connected uh, the 5 volt pin on that board to ground. So we had to go digging out a big hole in the board effectively to repair that one um, i will put the link for that one in the description if you would like to see it um it's a fair old eye opener is that one one of the more complicated repairs i think we've done uh, but there we go so what we're going to do now is we're just going to pop that capacitor back on the board now don't worry if you've taken one off yourself to do this and you can't remember which way around they go because they are not polarized it doesn't matter they're not like a, a normal capacitor these little surface mount ones can go on either which way. So it doesn't matter if you solder them left to right, back to front, whatever, upside down. You're not going to affect anything too badly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to solder this back in place. So I'm going to need a pair of tweezers. And I'm just going to pop a little tiny bit of solder. On those pads. Could definitely do with a, a smaller tip. Could definitely do with a smaller tip. <sighs> Trouble is, I think the, the other tip I've got is going to be too small for this job. <sighs> to love it, aren't you? So, what have I learned today? When I've finished, I need to jump straight onto Kaiser Tech <laughs> in order to be. Slightly bigger tip. The one that's not quite as big as my other one there. Big Bertha. Okay, that's one side on. Okay, I'll do the other. Yeah. 
trouble is, like I say, with the fine tips, they don't have enough oomph to flow these bigger connection points, but the big one I have is just too big. Clean that up in a sec. Okie doke. Well, that was harder than it needed to be. Of course, if I made sure I had the right size tip for the job, that would help. So, yes, this evening I will be going and buying a new tip. <laughs> So of course, I mean the ideal thing there would have been able to be able to use the hot air, um, but these connectors, as you can see here, there's the four-pin power supply connector. is very close to these optical drive connectors here, and they're not made of high-temperature thermoplastic or anything of that nature. They are quite delicate. They are sensitive to heat, and they will melt if you decide to go wafting an air wand too close to them. Um, so that kind of makes yeah putting stuff like that back in place fairly awkward but we needed to do that in order to get enough space around that five volt pin in order to restore the connection so needs must but definitely uh, without a doubt need a, a better sized soldering iron tip for the job than that but it's all back in place now so we don't really mind We're all okay again now. We're all friends. Okay, so our capacitor is back on. And our 5 volt connector is back on. So, if we remember, We also had a little amendment on the bottom of the note from Sam to say that there were a couple of other little problems with this PlayStation, and we'll see if we can work out what those are. They might be something or nothing, they might be something quite trivial, then again they might be something that's a real pain in the backside. So, let's take a look. It does look at some point as though this machine's had a bit of a whack, actually. Um, I don't know, maybe that's why it doesn't read discs, maybe that's how the power supply connector got ripped off the board, I don't know. Um, but there does appear to be one or two dents underneath the main lid of the machine, so it makes me think at some point it's maybe had a bit of a drop or something's been fairly heavy has been put on top of it at some point. But that's our connector now back in place, and that should be great and ready to go now. You can see there, look, it's nice and strong. We don't have to put any um, potting compound or anything on that. That's going to be that's going to be fine, absolutely fine as it is. So as far as the old fan sounding noisy during gameplay goes that's probably down to this I can't really zoom out far enough on the uh, on the scope for this one unfortunately but suffice it to say that what's underneath there is this thing This thing right here. Yes, that is the main APU processor combination of processor and graphics chip on these motherboards, the CXD937G. The thermal paste, it actually isn't as dry and horrible and crusty as I thought it might be, but it's not it's not brilliant, so we're just gonna clean this off. So yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of it stuffed down the side. And it is a bit dry and crusty. You can see it just flakes off there when we put a bit of pressure on there. Which isn't necessarily ideal. So it can be a little bit messy getting this stuff out. Old and dry, crusty, horrible stuff 
so we're just going to give this a quick clean with some IPA just to get rid of the traces of it around the APU Make sure we get rid of the biggest part of whatever's kicking around on the surface. So yeah, what happens is when that paste gets a few years under its belt, it goes a little bit dry, a little bit crusty. It doesn't conduct the heat as well as it should do. Of course, when you're in a, an epic gaming session. It sounds like it's about to take off, so we'll just clean that. What we're going to do, we'll clean the other side of the heat sink as well where the board goes into the machine we'll clear the fan out because it looks like there's a fair bit of dust in there as well none of that will be helping we'll replace that thermal paste with some arctic uh, mx4 uh, thermal paste and then what we'll do is once we've got the machine partially reassembled We'll plug it in, we'll test it, and then we'll see if we can work out what that disk drive issue is. Hopefully it's something trivial, it might just be something as simple as a dirty laser. And again, it might be something as complicated as needed to completely replace it. So, uh, let's get that done, and now uh, we'll see you in a sec. Right, okay ladies and gentlemen, so we have our PlayStation partially reassembled here now. As you can see there, on the top. And it's plugged into our monitor just over there. So that's what we need to do, is plug it in and give it a test. So we have it all hooked up. So let's see what happens when we turn this on now. We have a beep, we have a blue light, so we have power. So hopefully we'll get some output on the display. There we go, PlayStation logo. Excellent. So I have forgotten my tripod today, which is annoying because, actually I took it down last month for the baby's birthday. I forgot to bring it back, and uh, I've been a fair bit in front on content recently, so I've not had to record any for a little while. So I've completely forgotten to bring it up, and then today, of course, I want to do some filming, and I completely forget. So, okay, we have an epilepsy warning. It's taking a minute to think about it. There we go. We're in, and we have a white light on our PlayStation. And as you can see there, we have video. So, apparently this doesn't read discs. So what we're going to do is, let's find, a, let's find a game. I can cramp in my army. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get a game disc and put it in and see what happens there. Eh? If you can hear that. Definitely not a happy bunny. See there in the top right hand corner, of course, you've got the spinning disc icon. It's just clicking and whirring away there. Unrecognized disc. Yeah, not brilliant. Okay, so what we'll try and do is we'll try and put a gnome working disc drive in this machine and see if that uh, gives us any uh, anything else to go off. Hopefully that's going to make it work, and if it does, just change the laser over, and uh, yeah, this should be uh, good to fight another day. So we'll uh, just uh, take the power supply back out, we'll take this drive out, get it swapped, give it another test, and uh, hopefully have a working PlayStation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we have our PS4 partially reassembled now. Just change the uh, the laser in the drive. So let's pop a game in. Go over here. Start it. Let's see what we get. Excellent. There we go. All working again. And nice and quiet as well. No clicking, no ticking, no grinding around. Everything's nice and quiet. And there she is. So that's excellent. Yep, we're happy with that. So, what have we done today, ladies and gentlemen? Well, this one had a few problems. Uh, it was sent in here primarily because it had a rather nasty issue 
with the four pin five volt connector on the actual motherboard itself. We've actually resoldered that in place. And what we did to do that was we removed the large smoothing cap on the five volt nail, which gave us a bit more room to work with. And then we soldered our new connector in, of course, after creating a new pad on the five volt rail because the other one was missing and been ripped out. Uh, we resoldered that connector in, then we stripped the machine back. We've replaced the thermal paste. We've completely cleaned out the fan and heatsink assembly. Um, There's quite a lot of dust and stuff inside the actual fan and heatsink, which will be why this thing was running really noisily when it was uh, gaming. Uh, but now it seems actually nice and quiet. Uh, I've been running this on the bench for 20, 25 minutes with a disc in. Uh, prior to uh, just opening this test in, and as you can hear, it's nice and quiet if we try and get close to it. Can't hear anything. So yeah, that's all really nice. So that's all cool, and it's nice and quiet in game as well. And of course then, we had to resolve the disc reading issue, which uh, was just a new laser. So all those things are sorted out now, and as you can see, this PlayStation is back in the land of the living. And is ready to game once again. So this is ready to go back to its owner. And uh, yeah, fantastic. So uh, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this or you found it useful. If you have found it useful, then I would really, really appreciate it if you'd stick a like, a big thumbs up down there uh, for me. That would be awesome. Uh, what, like I say, YouTube uh, algorithms use that. And basically, the more people like it, the more people see my videos. Hopefully, the channel grows. If the channel grows, I do more videos. Hopefully, so that's the way that it works. So, if you've liked it, then you, if you put a like below, you've helped me magnificently. Um, if you are in the UK or the EU and you'd like a repair of your own console, then feel free to hit me up at my business email address. It's in the description below, but uh, it's actually whiteyandrewpaul at outlook.com. And I'm also on Twitter, at WhiteyAndrewPaul. Just hit me up on there as well via a DM. Uh, if you tweet me, I might see it. I might not. I don't tend to look at tweets to me, specifically. Partly because I don't really know how to use Twitter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my DM inbox is in there. And if you DM me, I'll definitely get back to you. Um, like I say, if you have any comments, any questions on the video or what we've done here today, then feel free to just pop a question in the comments below. I also have private messages on YouTube as well. So if you've got anything for me there, then feel free to hit me up. Uh, if you are in need of any parts or components for consoles, MacBooks, etc., then please do judge drop me a message and I'm sure we can hit, we can uh, hit you up even on the most obscure part so uh, yeah if you uh, want to drop us a message if you need anything at all then uh, yep that would all be very much appreciated as well ladies and gentlemen so thank you very much for watching I've been Andy Paul you've been fantastic so for me for now it's bye bye and uh, hope life treats you well so till the next one it's bye for now Many thanks for watching then ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate and of course subscribe to the channel if you found this useful, we've plenty more content on there and there's lots more to come.